Welcome to the committee. Thank you for your patience. Item 12, members. Good morning, Chair and members. I'm here today to present Assembly Bill 2212, which passed the Assembly on consent. This bill is a no-nonsense effort to make sure bullies are held accountable for their actions that would allow superintendent or principal of a secondary school to be recommend suspension or expulsion if a student posts a harassing video among students on the internet. California has yet to include the posting of a video into the education code. This allows students not to receive any kind of punishment. It has become a growing trend of students posting videos online to try to gain notoriety. According to NoBullying.com, 70% of students report seeing acts of cyberbullying frequently online. This bill is needed to address the increasing number of students posting harassing videos targeting innocent students. This will ensure that students will commit to the, uh, co that commit these acts uh, are appropriately punished. And uh, just to uh, illuminate uh, for the chair and members, uh, prior to serving uh, here, I was on the council, but I served for 12 years on the school board for the Huntington Beach Union High School District and considering bullying a growing problem. And, and I think that this uh, fix uh, to a previous bill will do a lot in order to be able to combat a growing problem. Thank you. In support of the bill, uh, Daniel Savino, Association of Regional Center Agencies. California's 21 nonprofit regional centers have for uh, 50 years now coordinated services and supports for nearly 300,000 people with developmental disabilities. Those centers include, uh, including in the Chairs District, San Gabe, Pomona, North LA, Lanterman, and Eastern LA regional centers. Uh, we have uh, Regional Center of Orange County and Inland Regional Center, San Gabe Pomona, Alta, and others representing uh, folks within your districts. Uh, the students that live within our communities often are faced with bullying. People with developmental disabilities are at a heightened risk of such attacks. Uh, this bill, very concise uh, piece of legislation, builds on existing policy and uh, simply reflects current technology and opportunities uh, for near do wells to engage in bullying. A recent example from uh, outside of state, one of the most uh, horrific examples I can think of. A young man with autism was uh, convinced by some individuals who purported to be friends to participate in the ice bucket challenge. This bucket was not filled with ice, but human excrement. This attack was documented via cell phone video. In California, current statute would prevent that type of activity from being pursued under bullying provisions. Obviously, a number of other offenses were uh, committed here in that process, so violation would be pursued. But this addition of the term video to the several terms already enumerated is a simple fix to ensure that current bullying law can capture these types of offenses and ensure a safe environment for students. So we very much appreciate the author's attention to this small detail. It's a simple and concise bill, very positive, very good step forward, and we're strongly in support. Thank you. In support of the bill. Erica Hoffman, on behalf of the California School Boards Association, we do see this as clarifying. Um, when you say image, which is the current word used in statute, it could be a picture, it could be a video, not quite sure. This provides that clarification very simply by just inserting that term. We would urge your I vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Others in support of the bill? Greg here with the ARC and United Cerebral Palsy California Collaboration, a coalition of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families, friends, and service providers. Uh, Students with disabilities may be the most bullied group of, of children and youth in our schools. Uh, and the bulliers uh, often, many times, will move on later on to outright hate crimes. We look at uh, trying to nip it in the bug, bud as both good in the immediate and in the long term, and we support the bill. Thank you. Gordon Dowdy, on behalf of the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, although Bullying does not cause suicide. It is a major contributor, and especially for our 14,839 10 to 19-year-olds who attempted suicide in 2014 in California. I think that the clarification around video, uh, whether or not it was self-taken or taken by others, um, certainly adds to the clarification of the code. Thank you. Thank you very much. Others in support of the bill? Is there any opposition to the bill? Thank you. Any questions from members? Uh, Senator Leva. 
not a question, just thank you very much for bringing this forward and for your attention to detail, because who would know that video could actually slip through the cracks and be much worse and more impactful than, a, than a, just a picture. So all of it's bad, but this is great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator Pan. I too appreciate what you're doing. I just uh, one. I think this also uh, uh, also applies to manipulation of video because I know people sometimes will do that as well. Unfortunately, and that may be may appear more compelling than even just a manipulation of an image. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion? I move the bill. The bill has been moved. Would you like to close? Thank you very much for allowing me to present this bill. I ask for your I vote. Thank you. Okay. The bill has been moved. This is item number 12, AB 2212. Motion is due pass to the floor. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. Block? Aye. Block, aye. Hancock? Huff? Aye. Huff, aye. Leva? Aye. Leva, aye. Mendoza? Aye. Monning? Pan? Aye. Pan, aye. Vidak? Aye. Vidak, aye. Six. We have six votes sufficient for passage. We'll keep the roll open for absent members. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, we have Assembly Member uh, McCarty, uh, item three. Morning. Good morning. I have one bill here today, and it's a bill that merges public health and higher education, essentially working to make sure our public colleges and universities are smoke uh, tobacco free. You know, we have kind of a hodgepodge system in California where the UC has, has a smoke free policy, a great number of community colleges has a policy, and the CSU has a system that has a few other campuses. But the bottom line is, is too many students uh, go to school and want to take a lunch break and can't really have a healthy environment to take a break from their class and study without having to worry about secondhand smoke and certainly the negative impacts of, of it and uh, I present to you this bill here today. And, oh, I want to uh, first, uh, before I move on, uh, thank the, uh, the committee staff working with us and, and uh, accept the uh, proposed author's amendment dealing with the enforcement that before they have uh, heavy enforcement of this and the fines that the school would have a process to, to kind of phase it in. So um, with that, I, I, I uh, present this to you and have witnesses from the college setting and uh, public health advocates and ask for your right vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. In support of the bill. Good morning, Chair and members. My name is Lindsay Freitas. I'm with the American Lung Association in California here in strong support of this bill. Uh, this bill ensures strong protections against unwanted exposure to secondhand smoke and helps counter tobacco industry efforts to target young adults in our state. The risk of exposure to secondhand smoke is very real. In 2006, the U.S. Surgeon General stated that secondhand smoke exposure causes disease and premature death in non-smokers and maintained that there is no risk-free level of exposure to secondhand smoke. Exposure to secondhand smoke can have immediate health consequences, including eye, nose, and throat irritation, and just being near somebody who is smoking can trigger asthma attacks and CO problems for people with COPD. So it's a very real problem for those suffering from lung disease. Uh, by prohibiting tobacco use on college campuses, we can make sure that those students who do not want to be exposed to secondhand smoke are protected. Furthermore, nationwide, nearly 19% of young adults between the ages of 18 and 24 smoke, and almost no one starts smoking after the age of 25. The transition from occasional tobacco use to daily habit usually occurs in the years just after high school, and it's no secret that the tobacco companies aggressively target this age group by sponsoring bar nights, music shows, and other venues that appeal to college-age students. Despite the aggressive marketing from tobacco companies, prohibiting the use of tobacco products at colleges and universities would maintain recent social norm advances discouraging the use of these deadly products. Uh, for these reasons, I encourage your I vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. In support of the bill. Uh, my name is Ray DeJulia. I'm the Vice President of Administration at American River College, one of the largest community colleges in the state. Um, among other duties, uh, I was asked to chair the Smoking Tobacco-Free uh, Task Force on our uh, campus. Uh, last year, we did a survey on our campus. We held forums, and by a very large uh, majority, uh, we were asked to implement a non-smoking policy. We proceeded with this task force to review our current standard. We had a very liberal um, policy, uh, smoke anywhere on campus within, with, 
except within 30 feet of doors. Uh, we went from that to a no smoking campus uh, on January 1st of this year. It took us about six months to implement uh, that uh, activity. Uh, we uh, adopted a theme, clearing the air. Um, it was uh, in line with what you just heard in regards to the secondhand smoke uh, activities. The uh, campus has adopted this uh, very, very um, diligently, and we've had very little um, pushback uh, at all. Uh, at the same time, uh, we have three sister colleges in the Los Rios district. All of those uh, colleges have designated smoking areas. Our board of trustees has, has asked them or required them to convert to a no smoking campus. And I can tell you all three of those campuses are having trouble doing that because they already have a controlled smoking environment and this bill would uh, give the authority for um, those campuses and all those throughout uh, the state uh, to uh, implement a uh, smoke, tobacco, and vape-free uh, climate. And if you were to come on our campus today, you will not see one no smoking sign because what we did was we took down 130 of those signs and put up this sign which says welcome to our campus that is smoke, tobacco, and vape free. The concept was that we want to create a positive learning environment on our campus and not to have uh, secondhand smoke and other activities be prevalent. So I, um, on behalf of our uh, institution, we're thankful we were able to do this without the bill, but I do know it would be uh, much assistance to many colleges who uh, would not necessarily have the same kind of success we would have without this bill, and we urge you to support the bill. Thank you very much. In support of the bill. Hi, my name is Kimberly Homer Vagadori. I'm with the California Youth Advocacy Network. I've been working for 15 years with colleges and universities throughout the state on the adoption, implementation, and enforcement of these policies. Um, we do not have an official position on the bill, but I'm here today to answer any questions that you might have on this issue. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, others in support of the bill? Uh, thank you. Uh, Matthew Canty with the Faculty Association of California Community Colleges uh, in support. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair. Betsy Armstrong with the County Health Executives Association representing local health departments and urge your support. Thank you. Ashley Wickland on behalf of the American Heart Association in support. Thank you. Alicia Sanchez representing the California Medical Association in support. Thank you. Thank you, Mark McDonald McCallum Group on behalf of the Los Rios Community College District. Uh, and just to add that this bill would create uniformity in a system where students attend, a lot of students attend more than one college. So we would urge your support. Thank you. Thank you. Tim Gibbs, American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network in support. Thanks. Okay, any others in support? Is there any opposition? The committee didn't receive any written opposition. Any comments, questions from members? No. Bill has been moved. Would you like to close, Assembly Member? Thank you for your consideration. Ask for your iPhone. Thank you very much. Let's call the roll. Item number three, AB 1594. The motion is due pass as amended to appropriations. Lou? Aye. Lou, I block. Block I, Hancock, Huff, no. Huff, no, Leva, Leva I, Mendoza, Monning, Pan, aye. Pan I, Vidak, no. Vidak, no. That's four two. Four two. We'll leave the roll open for our absent members. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I don't see Assembly Member Mullen, but I see Assembly Member Medina. You have item eleven, uh, AB twenty one fifty four. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. As you know, the California Student Aid Commission is responsible for, responsible for administering financial aid to students attending public and private universities, colleges, and vocational schools. California Student Aid Commission is comprised of 15 members, two of which are students enrolled in California colleges. The student members serve staggered two-year terms 
and help shape financial aid policy that is in the best interest of California's college students. They also represent all students receiving financial aid in California colleges, which requires a great deal of time and commitment. For the past several years, student commissioners have faced challenges serving on the commission while working to pay for school. AB 2154 would allow student commissioners to serve up to one additional year and also allow student commissioners to serve up to six months after graduation if the governor has not yet appointed a successor. It would provide a tuition waiver to student commissioners for the duration of the term to ensure they can focus on their work of representing students and worry less about paying for school. It would also require that, stu that the student commission not notify the appropriate student organizations for each student vacancy at least three months before the expiration of the term. The bill received bipartisan unanimous support and is supported by the California Student Association, the California Student Aid Commission, and the California State University, and the UC Student Association. Here with me this morning is Amparo Diaz from the California Student Aid Association and Brandon Biggert from the California Student Aid Commission, both to testify in support. Thank you, in support of the bill. Thank you, um, I'm Paro Diaz with the Cal State Student Association. We are sponsors of this legislation and are thankful to the member for bringing this issue forward. So this bill does three things. The first is a tuition waiver that you heard about. We see this as a crucial aspect of this bill because it allows student commissioners to serve to the, their best ability, their student constituencies. This bill also temporarily extends, extends the student commissioner's term. Because um, shared governance is of our highest priority, we believe that the absence of a crucial student voice on the commission is a disservice to students. So we are thankful to see that on there. And lastly, as this bill progressed, we saw that there was a need for student associations to be aware when, when it is their time to present a list of nominees. So this bill will also take care of that. So with that, I thank you for having me here today and I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you. Please. Good morning, Chair, members. Um, my name is Brandon Biggert. I'm with the California Student Aid Commission. We support this bill. Um, we think that it, it targets very specific issues experienced by student commissioners and ensures consistent representation on the commission um, from the students who we serve. So uh, we support the legislation and I'm here to answer any questions you have in relation to the student commissioners and how this bill will help. Thank you. Thank you very much. Andrew Martinez, California State University. Uh, we are in support of the measure. Okay, any questions from members? Did this clarify your issue, Senator Pan? Sort of? Um, I, sort of, actually, uh, as I was looking at the actual text of the bill. So, um, Assemblyman Medina, thank you for carrying this bill. I, I will be supporting this bill. Um, I, I had noted that there might have been a potential conflict between your bill and Assemblyman Lopez's bill in terms of being able to serve on the commission after you've finished graduating. And uh, at least, again, I'm not an attorney. I think there's some ambiguity, not actually in the languages of the respective bills, but perhaps in the existing code that uh, may not clarify that. Yeah. And so it may be good to do that, I, I think. So just, again, just a quick read of that. So uh, I had raised that uh, when uh, Senator Lopez's bill was presented, uh, whether there was gonna be some work between the two of you to clarify this issue, to make it very clear that what your intent uh, will will be in place, and to, and that there was, seemed to be there was some ambiguity in the way her bill was not phrased, the way the code was phrased in relation to her bill that would actually imply because it said that you actually have to be um, enrolled during the duration of your term, and that's actually in code, which would be seem to be appear to be in conflict with what your bill is saying, which is that you can actually serve after a year after um, you've. Um, uh, graduated if there if there's no appointment so hopefully um, uh, that would be just a technical change or something but certainly I support your bill and the intent of your bill and I'd be happy to move your bill in fact thank you all right any other questions or comments from members uh, assembly member Medina um, and so I want to thank Senator Pan for uh, pointing that out and uh, uh, certainly moving forward I'll make sure to work with assemblywoman uh, Lopez to clarify that so that that there is not 
any conflict. But thank you again for uh, for pointing it out, and thank you for moving the bill. Okay, the bill has been moved. Mm -hmm. This is item number 11, AB 2154. The motion is due pass to appropriations. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. Block? Aye. Block, aye. Hancock? Huff? Huff, aye. Leva? Aye. Leva, aye. Mendoza? Monning? Pan? Aye. Pan, aye. Vidak? Aye. Vidak, aye. That's six. Six votes, sufficient for passage, but we'll keep the roll open for our absent members. Thank you. Thank you. And um, we have item 25, AB 2732, uh, Assembly Member Chan. And then we have uh, Assembly Member Mullen. Okay. Morning. Morning. Thank you, Madam Chair and committee members. So here are some actual quotes from cyberbullies. I hope she sees this and kills herself. The world would be a better place without you. Members, again, these are actual quotes from online bullies. Students on the receiving end of those comments ultimately ended their, their own lives. As this committee well knows, the issue of cyber harassment is real, but what we are finding is the problem does not end once college begins. In fact, it appears the problem is just as acute and consequential in college years as it is in secondary education. And it hits female and Asian students in particular, with the latter being harassed four times as often as other ethnicities. A study from the University of Washington demonstrates that college-aged females are just as likely to suffer the negative effects of cyberbullying as younger adolescents. We really have to start thinking about this issue, not just in the context of high school, but also in the post-secondary environment, and it makes sense. College students are the most frequent users of social media and digital platforms. AB 2732 is not the first legislation addressing cyberbullying in college in the country, but it is the first in California. Cyberbullying is known to amplify depression and fuel substance abuse. New Jersey passed comprehensive cyberbullying legislation for public universities after a Rutgers student was digitally harassed and ultimately committed suicide. AB 2732 takes the first but very important legislative step in California by ensuring students have the resources to respond to this issue as they enter college. The bill requires the California State University and requests the University of California to provide preventative strategies about cyberbullying during student orientation. And this bipartisan bill carries the support of the California State Student Association, as well as the California College of Uni University Police Chiefs. With that, I respectfully ask for your support, and I do have my joint author here, Assemblymember Lowe. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair and members. Uh, respectfully ask for your support on this. As we all know, this is a pervasive issue, of not only facing the younger generations, millennials, and all alike. And uh, we, we think this is a good step at addressing this issue and respectfully ask for your support. Thank you. Any other um, support for the bill? Good morning again. I'm Faro Diaz with the Cal State Student Association in support of this bill. Thank you. Any others in support? Is there any opposition to the bill? We didn't receive um, any written opposition to the bill. Any questions from members? The bill has been moved. But I, let me just say to you again that student conduct is another one of those huge issues, and cyberbullying is not defined in this piece of legislation. We all think we know what it is. And um, it's for me, it's another one off, and there ought to be a bigger, it ought to be looked at in a bigger context. Because, you know, going to student orientation, you've got a whole bunch of sexual harassment, cyberbullying, the whole list of things that kids ought to look out for. Uh, what's good behavior, what's bad behavior, you know, whatever. And um, for me, it's we just need a more comprehensive policy to take a look at what it is that we're asking our kids to do or not do. And um, But we appreciate you're coming forward with a bill, and uh, I think the recommendation is a due pass. There's no amendments to this bill. So the bill has been moved. Um, let's call the roll. 
This is item number 25, AB 2732. Motion is due pass to appropriations. Lou. Aye. Lou, aye. Block. Block, aye. Hancock. Huff. Huff, aye. Leva. <laughs> Leva, aye. I didn't even hear that. Mendoza. Mendoza, aye. Monning. Pan. Aye. Pan, aye. Vidak. Aye. Vidak, aye. Seven. Seven votes. The bill is sufficient for passage. We'll keep the roll open for our absent members. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So, members, we have one more bill to hear. That's uh, Assemblymember Mullen, if he gets here. If not, we'll move, move him on. You may, you may move Senator Wood's bill, uh, which we heard first, is item 22, AB 2615. So let's call the roll on that one. The motion was due pass as amended to appropriations. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. Block? Aye. Block, aye. Hancock? Huff? Aye. Huff, aye. Leva? Aye. Leva, aye. Mendoza? Aye. Mendoza, aye. Monning? Pan? Aye. Pan, aye. Vidak? Aye. Vidak, aye. Seven. Seven votes, sufficient for passage. We'll keep the roll open for our absent members. So let's, um, in lieu of uh, member Mullen, uh, Coming, let's uh, let's go back and through the file. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Item number three, AB fifteen ninety four, do pass as amended to appropriations. The vote is four two. Hancock, Mendoza, Mendoza I, Monning. That's five two. Five two. Still need Monning on there. Okay. We'll leave the roll open for uh, Senator Monning. Um, Item number four, AB 1660. The motion is due pass to the floor. The vote is 6-0. Chair voting aye. Hancock? Mendoza? Aye. Mendoza aye. Monning? That's 7-0. We still need Monning. Yeah, we'll just, we'll leave, we'll leave the roll open. Okay. Item number 11, AB 2154. The motion is due pass to appropriations. The vote is 6-0 with the chair voting aye. Hancock, Mendoza, aye. Mendoza, aye. Monning, that's seven, zero. Seven, zero, we'll leave the roll open. <clears throat> Item number 12, AB 2212. The motion is due pass to the floor. The vote is six, zero with the chair voting aye. Hancock, Mendoza, aye. Mendoza, aye. Seven, zero. Seven, zero, we'll leave the roll open. Item number 15, AB 2294. The motion is due pass as amended to appropriations. The vote is 4-2 with the chair voting aye. Hancock, Mendoza, aye. Mendoza aye. Monning, that's 5-2. Okay. Item number 16, AB 2306. The motion is due pass. No Oops, motion. I'm sorry. That's a hold. That's a hold. <laughs> no, there was no motion. Thank you. Item number 17 is 20 AB 2317. We haven't heard it. Yes. <laughs> Stop. Okay. Item number 18. Reconsideration. Well, he wanted to. Oh, okay. I want to call the absent members. AB 2336. The motion is due pass to appropriations. The vote is 1-1. One, one with the chair voting no. Block, Hancock, Huff, Leva, Mendoza, Monning, Pan. Huff, I. This is item 18, AB special, 23. Special education teachers. Um, that was half I, so it's 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. How many votes are out? Um, just just uh, Hancock and Mo and, uh, and Monning. And Monning. Oh. Okay, well, let's, let's, uh, let's hold that for, we'll move on, okay? okay. So, Assemblymember Mullen is here, so let's uh, hear his bill, item 17. We'll come back and do that. Uh, item 17, AB 2317. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
and members for your patience.